All right, boys and girls, here's a fun one for you. This right here is the high voltage inverter board out of a brand new Panasonic inverter microwave. This is their current production model. It's slightly different from their older inverters and is easier to interface with. Today we're going to cover the very essential basics of how to use this thing for your own projects. It's really not that much more difficult than using any other microwave oven power supply, but this one has some substantial advantages and maybe some disadvantages to go along with it. The basics here are, uh, this thing replaces the heavy-duty transformer and voltage doubler circuit in a normal microwave. It provides a constant current output that's variable between 100 and 400 milliamps at up to 4,000 volts. That is a lot of power. It probably is capable of going higher than that because the open circuit voltage on this thing pegs my 6 kilovolt meter. So be careful, experiment, and see what you can squeeze out of this thing. Um, here's the essential part. This is the AC input connector. Blue is hot, gray is neutral. Uh, it can be connected to AC line power without any output from the inverter until you apply the right logic signals to these three control lines. Uh, it only draws about 50 to 100 milliamps in standby. Now these three control lines are what regulates the output power of the inverter and indicates that it, to the inverter that it's safe for it to start operating and produce high voltage output. Brown is ground. Uh, orange is some type of a funky enable line which when it's in the microwave receives a 110 hertz square wave with a 50 percent duty cycle and a peak voltage of 3.3 volts. Turns out that's not really necessary to get the inverter to operate. If you just ground the orange line through a 1k resistor uh, that's good enough and it works. Uh, but if it floats then the inverter will not operate. The yellow line is where the magic happens. That is the pulse width modulation control input. You need to provide a 220 hertz square wave with a variable duty cycle. Uh, the duty cycle determines the percentage of output power that the inverter produces. Um, it has some type of sensing circuitry in it which will only allow it to produce output when it receives a square wave that's within the right frequency and duty cycle range. In order for the inverter to start, you must apply a square wave with a duty cycle that is less than 43%. You can ramp it up from there, but you have to start at 43% or below. If you start out higher, the inverter will lock out and you have to remove line power and reboot the thing, essentially, before it will produce any output at all. So, you can build a little circuit with a 555 timer, as I have here, which will produce a uh, 220 hertz square wave with variable duty cycle. Um, you want a peak voltage between 3.3 and 5 volts roughly. It seems to use TTL level signals. Um, and that's good enough. Uh, that will do it. Now, be careful with this thing. Um, just like any other microwave oven power supply, it's capable of easily killing you, starting fires, producing huge amounts of microwaves, um, doing all kinds of bad things to you and your equipment. But it's also capable of doing some pretty amazing good things for you when you use it the right way. Um, other information that you may want to know about this thing, uh, the switching frequency of the transformer itself seems to be approximately 23 kilohertz. It appears to operate in a flyback mode. Uh, this new inverter design uses only one IGBT switch, not two switches like the old inverters. Um, seems to be pretty efficient. This heat sink doesn't get very hot, although, as it notes right here, the heat sink is live. Um, it is live with rectified line power during operation, so be careful with that. Um, you can probably achieve a smoothed output by uh, putting a filter capacitance on the DC bus after this bridge rectifier. I haven't tried that yet, but that should work just fine. And it may be possible to reconfigure this for a positive high voltage output by reconfiguring the diode and capacitor array on the output of the transformer. I haven't done that yet, but I think it may be necessary to switch the uh, the winding output leads as well, because if this converter operates in flyback mode, then the output is not true AC. It's a DC pulse strain. Um, and if that's the case, then simply reversing the connection of the diodes will not result in very good output at all uh, and could potentially damage the inverter. So I intend to follow up once I have those issues resolved. Uh, in the meantime, happy hacking, be safe, and enjoy.